Good evening. Goodbye forever by Nat Chan Wing Shui. Chapter 19, Part 1. When I finally got to Burdenath in Nepal, however, I knew that was exactly where I needed to be. My first sight of the great Churton left an impression on me that has never dwindled. I have seen far more ostensibly imposing architectural Buddhist features, but none have had the impact of the great Churton of Boda. Chapter 19, Demon Destroyer. October 1971 to November 1972. Burdenath was quiet, more dulcet by evident decibels than MacLeod Gange. It was conspicuously ancient, removed from the conventional 20th century flow of time. A bus arrived and departed each day, morning and evening. Other than the two buses, there was no traffic, no sound other than birdsong and a few dogs. The great Churton of Bodenath was surrounded by fields. The road outside the Churton precincts was a dirt track with three small shops, hardly more than stalls. One sold eggs, butter, ghee and bread. One sold vegetables. The other sold simple kitchen hardware, paper, pencils and cheap Indian ballpoint pens that leaked. Opening hours were limited to a few hours in the morning. They were not open every day. Opening hours and days seemed sporadic, as would befit an easy-going lifestyle, not primarily concerned with profit and loss. Out amongst the fields were a few gompers, but the Dujum gompa was across the road from the main entrance to the Churton precinct. Having arrived, I found a place to stay quite easily and settled in. The next morning, I set out to find where Kyabje Dujum Rungshe might be living. First, I went to the Dujum gompa. I felt that I should sit there for a respectable period of time before asking whether it was possible to have an audience with Dujum Rungshe. I sat for two hours. I had been noticed as I sat, but in a cheerful way. They could see that I was engaged in meditation, so the monks simply smiled in passing. Then I asked about Dujum Rungshe when I'd concluded my meditation session and discovered that he didn't live at the Gompa or in any place attached to the Gompa. He lived in one of the houses that surrounded the Great Churton. I'd meditated in the Dujum Gompa because I'd wanted to absorb as much as possible in terms of a sense of the demon destroyer I hoped to meet. I'd learned that Dujum meant demon destroyer. Jidrel Yeshe Dorje, his personal name, meant fearless thunderbolt of primordial wisdom. It was a powerful name, but Nakpa Yeshe Dorje had told me that Dujum Rinpoche was the living evidence of the name. I walked around the Great Churton three times before I inquired after Dujum Rinpoche and somehow, surprisingly, I was directed to his house. It was easy to find. I have come from Macleod Gange. I have been studying with Nakpa Yeshe Dorje. I have been practising Dujum Tersa Mundro with him and also Tromanakmo and he's advised me to come to Nepal to see Kyabje Dujum Rungshe. Is it possible for me to meet Dujum Rungshe? Yes, welcome. You are coming inside. And there was Kyabje Dujum Rungshe, smiling as he always smiled thereafter. 
It is not really possible to explain how I witnessed the presence of Dujan Rinpoche, how he appeared to a young Englishman. I'd been preempted. I was going to meet Pamas and Baba. With that introduction, I could have been disappointed, but I was not. I was staggered. On first meeting, Dujum Rinpoche didn't seem supernatural, but he was super real. He was the most utterly real human being I'd ever met. That, however, was only my first impression, which was quickly shattered. Dujan Rinpoche seemed to know who I was and to have expected me. It was like waking up from a dream in which I'd imagined myself to have been a young English bluesman and art student. But on waking, I was someone I didn't know. My previous life suddenly melted. I was simply extant in the presence of Dujan Rinpoche being what I really was in a waking life that was foreign to me. It was as if I dreamed my entire life history up till that point. Suddenly Tara, the white lady of my childhood dreams and visions, flashed on the surface of my mind. Her image lasted only a moment, but it had a strange effect on me. Once the visual aspect of her was gone, it was as if everything in my visual field had become imbued with her. She became everything I saw. That is not to say that anything looked any different from what it was, but that everything I saw seemed to be emanated from her. Whenever I had seen her in the past, I knew that she had always been there. She had been there even when I'd not been aware of her. She had been there even when I'd apparently forgotten her. This sense of Tara did not distract me from Dujan Rinpoche because they were the same experience. As soon as I felt her presence, however, Dujan Rinpoche looked at me intently and then smiled. Oh, yeah. Andro Carmo in mind arriving. She with you always staying. This is good. But first you study with me. You will come every day when I am free. And we shall speak of her. We shall many things speaking. Today I say only Candro Carmo is your mind knowing. She is your mind knowing, and I am your mind knowing. In this we are undivided. This is why you hear coming and finding. The translator unpacked the words Kandro Karma. Kandro was Dakini, which meant enlightened lady or non-dual lady. Ka meant white and Mo was a female suffix. An unexpected Tibetan lesson and an explosion of information. Dujan Rinpoche had explained the major questions of my life in a few minutes. I was shocked. It was one of many shocks. These instances of Dujan Rinpoche's unimpeded clairvoyance were glorious, yet disorientating. He told me that there was no time on this particular occasion to talk with me about Kandro Kamo, but that he had wanted to establish the fact that this was something I needed to explore and to discuss with him. There is something you must develop in. She is very early for you, many years passing since visions first appearing. He looked a little grave at that point. There are obstacles coming, 
but always obstacles are rising possible. For Dzogchen practice, obstacles not negative. Obstacles, abs aspects of the path becoming. Much for you learning necessary, much practicing. Then revelations fulfilled coming. Then one day you will your own Sangha, Kandro Kamo's teacher, giving. I did not quite understand what Dujjan Rinpoche meant or intended by what he had said. And this day was evidently not the time to ask further questions. He indicated that our first audience was concluded and I took my respectful departure. So I really was to study with Dujjan Rinpoche. Obviously I wanted to study with him, but I was astonished that it was taken for granted. I was accepted without even having to ask. Fortunately, the monk, whose name was Tsering Dorje, spoke English and even though his syntax was Tibetan, his English pronunciation was better than average. I had all the luck. In the first full meeting after my first brief introductory audience, Dujun Rinpoche told me that I'd had many dreams especially when I was young, of Kandro Kamo. He said these were important dreams, but that no one had been able to help me understand these dreams or develop them. Maybe for Roman Catholic parents, Virgin Mary thinking, but Mother only dreams thinking. Father, he laughed, Nyompa thinking. Nyompa, madness. This was profoundly shocking. There was no way that Dujan Rinpoche could have known that my father questioned my sanity by any other means than a metaphysical microscope combined with a time telescope. Yeah, this happens many times before in Tibet. Often with daughters, parents are not always happy when visions are rising. But in West countries, Often people not knowing visions meaning. Anyway, now in Boulder arriving, many visions coming. Then time coming, and you everything Kandro Kamo discovery telling. Then advice given. Before then, Nundro's practicing. Dujan Rinpoche was silent for a while then, gazing at me intently and said, we must together meditation sit in, maybe possible every day. Some days not possible, but not two days passing without together sitting. Dujan Rinpoche told me that he would know more once we had spent more time together, but that I should take careful note of all my dreams and visions from that point on, and tell him of anything that related to Kandro Kamo. Dujan Rinpoche assured me that there had been no risk of my becoming a Myompa because of my dreams and visions of Kandro Kamo, but that because these phenomena were not understood, development had not been possible. I had suffered confusion and pain because obstructions had been caused. Dujan Rinpoche said that he was glad that there had been good friends with good parents in my life because this had given me confidence. He said that my mother was a good religious woman. My father had limited religious understanding but was not fundamentally a bad man even though he was ignorant of anything beyond the domain of material understanding. He told me that he would help me with the development I needed, but that it would require some years before fruition would occur. First, it was necessary that I practice more specifically to establish the ground from which my childhood visions could be of value. He told me that he had dwelt upon the nature of Kandro Kamo, and that she also had the name 
Garuda who tastes the primordial earth. She was a Teton. She had taken Jalu earlier in the century. I had been her son in my previous life. My name had been Aro Yeshe.